A couple more examples of being able to utilize induction to be able to prove these inequalities. We have this inequality that for all integers n, where n is greater than or equal to two, that five to the n plus nine is gonna be less than six to the n. All right, so start with the same step. Start with the basis step. So a basis step, um, let's just start with n equals two. Okay, so let's let n equal two by substitution. We can see that five squared plus nine is gonna be less than six squared, right? And we know that five squared plus nine is gonna be 34, since that's 25 plus nine, and then six squared is gonna be 36. And that's certainly a valid statement, okay? So we're gonna say that the basis step seems to hold for small values of n. All right, now we're gonna use the inductive step and assume that it holds for all n equals k, where k is an integer, okay? So let's assume the inequality holds for all n equals k where k is an integer, okay? So thus, what we're assuming by the inductive hypothesis is that five to the k plus nine is less than six to the k. Okay, and that's our inductive hypothesis. And what are we trying to show? Well, eventually we're trying to show that five to the k plus one plus nine is less than six to the k plus one. That's what we're hoping to show. Um, and we can't use substitution, okay? Just like in the previous example with inequalities. So what we're gonna do is we are going to build this. All right, so let's start with step three by just using this inductive hypothesis. Okay, so we're gonna say for step three, um, five, we can say that five to the K plus nine is less than six to the K by induction. And then this is where we have to add something special to both the left-hand and the right-hand side to be able to get to five to the K plus one plus nine, less than six to the K plus one. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to add, four, five to the k's, right? So I'm just adding this to the left-hand side. And to the right-hand side, I'm going to add five, six to the k's, right? And some of you might be thinking, well, why would you even possibly start to be able to add that to both sides? Well, first of all, we're gonna state that this is valid since four, times five to the K is less than six to the K plus five, six to the K's. Oh, excuse me, that's just less than five, six to the K's. All right, um, for all K greater than or equal to two. All right, and I guess we should go back up here and just state that this is valid for all K greater than or equal to two. All right, since that was what we started with up here um, in our domain, all right? And if you don't trust me, go ahead and plug in two, three, four, five, six, and you'll keep seeing that this is a valid um, explanation, all right? Now, the trick is, is that just make this number, the coefficient, one less than the base of five, okay? Which would be four, and then the same here. Just make the coefficient one less than the base six, because when you add those together, think about this, there's one five to the K and you have four five to the Ks, that's gonna be five five to the Ks plus nine, right? Just by adding those together. And then if there's one six to the K and five six to the Ks, that's gonna be six six to the Ks, right? And that's just by combining like terms. And then finally, we can use the exponent rules just like we did before 
Um, this is five to the first, this is six to the first. So this is gonna be five to the K plus one plus nine. And this is gonna be six to the K plus one. Okay, and that's by our exponent rules. Right, and you can clearly see that that's valid. And you can also clearly see that that's what we wanted on the left-hand side, five to the K plus one plus nine and then six to the K plus one on the right-hand side, all right? So that, again, this is the hardest step, being able to add the correct that term on both the right and the left-hand side of the inequality, all right? And so finally, what we can say is, thus by the basis and inductive steps, The original inequality is true. And hence, for all n in the integers and greater than or equal to two, we can say that five to the n plus nine is going to be less than six to the n, all right? Now, one of the sneakiest of these inequalities that I've seen is this one right here, where we have for all n in the integers for n greater than or equal to four, n factorial is greater than two to the n. Um, for those of you that are computer science majors, um, this one might be important with respect to O notation. All right, and for those of you that might be taking algorithm analysis classes later, um, this is gonna be helpful for you to show that it takes longer to run something in factorial time than it does exponential time with respect to this. So anyway, but let's go ahead and prove this. Um, and you're gonna to have to be really sneaky about what you add to both sides. Now this one's probably gonna be easier once we get down to step three, all right? But for right now, let's just go ahead and let's start with our basis step. And let's let n be equal to four. All right, since it's the lowest element in our domain, by substitution, we get that four factorial is gonna be greater than two to the fourth. All right, and we certainly know that 24 is indeed greater than 16, all right? So this implies that 24 is greater than 16, which is valid, okay? So thus, the basis step seems to hold four small values of n. All right, now we're going to go ahead and assume that this is valid for all n equals k. So assume the inequality is valid. for all n equals k, k is an integer, k greater than or equal to four, all right? So thus, k factorial is greater than two to the k. All right, that's our inductive hypothesis. All right, um, and what we wanna show eventually where we're trying to get to is that K plus one factorial is greater than two to the K plus one. All right, so that's what we need to show, all right? Um, and again, just like we did in the previous two examples with inequalities, we are going to have to build that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to it. All right, now we know the first part's easy. We're just gonna restate the inductive hypothesis. Okay, so by induction, we know that k factorial is greater than two to the k. All right, now, on the right-hand side, I'm pretty confident that if you guys have watched the first two videos with respect to inequalities, the right-hand side's pretty easy, okay? So um, we're just gonna add one, two to the k. In fact, we've already done this one in example number eight when we did this, all right? so. Um, and again, you just want to add one two to the K because it's one less than the base, right? And that's how we're going to try to do this every time. So one two to the K, or you just call it two to the K. 
Now, this is a really sneaky one to figure out what the factorial is. Because what can we do to be able to get to k plus 1 factorial? So check this out. To be able to get there, what we're going to do is we are going to add k times k factorial to both sides. All right. Now, this is certainly valid since k times k factorial is greater than 2 to the k for all k greater than 4. All right, so I don't think anybody doubts that that's a valid statement. All right, um, and again, if you don't trust it, just go ahead and plug in four, five, six, seven, show that it is valid. All right, but how is that going to get us to what we need? All right, remember what we need is right here, showing that k plus one factorial is greater than two to the k plus one. All right, so, well, let's go ahead and factor out k factorial from both sides. All right, so this is going to give us k factorial, and that'll leave us with 1 plus k is greater than 2 times 2 to the k. All right, so that's by factoring and just by combining like terms. Right? So, so that's pretty easy, right? I mean, it seems like we do the same stuff every time. We either factor or we combine like terms. All right? So again, factor, and then we added like terms. All right. Um, now, I think the right-hand side is pretty obvious because this is like 2 to the first, and then we can just add k and 1 together. So this is going to end up being 2 to the k plus 1, okay? And that's just our exponent rules. Um, now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to flip these around, all right, just by using our regular old commutative property. And it's going to become k factorial times k plus 1. OK, so. Um, and you didn't have to do that. But that might be help you to see that, OK, well, if I have k factorial and I'm multiplying by the next factor or the next term in the sequence of integers, then this is just going to turn into k plus one factorial. OK, so for instance, if this was like three times two times one right here, and this was the next number up four, wouldn't this just be equal to four factorial? And that's exactly what happens with this. All right, and that's just by our rules of factorials. All right, so this is by our factorial rules. And I believe that's exactly what we were looking for to be able to get to our answer for this, or at least to the k plus one. All right, so at this point, we're done. Okay, all we have to do is just write this out and we're gonna say, thus by basis and inductive steps, the original inequality is true. And hence, for all n and z, n greater than or equal to 4, n factorial is greater than 2 to the n. All right, so um, pretty cool that now we can go ahead and do these sorts of inequalities by utilizing mathematical induction.